Howdy! In this video, we're going to go ahead and talk about the ratio test. Now, I like to use the ratio test, or the ratio test is going to be utilized really whenever you see factorials, that's the really big one, and then exponentials kind of give it away as well. You can use a uh, ratio test then, but the big one's definitely going to be factorials. So what I first want to do before we get into the ratio test is talk about algebraic simplifications within the ratio test that you will be doing. So let's talk about n plus 1 factorial. The first thing that I want you to note is what is a factorial? Well, if you had something like 4 factorial, 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But isn't this also equal to three, 4 times 3 factorial, right? 4 times 3, 2, 1. I can make this 4 times 3 times 2 factorial. The point is I can keep pulling one out and throw the factorial at the end whenever I want. So if you have an n plus 1 factorial, I can pull out that n plus 1 and the previous term would be n factorial. Hypothetically too, if I had something like say 2n plus 2 factorial, what I can do is I can pull that term out, 2n plus 2, times, and the next term is going to be 1 less than that, 2n plus 1, times, and I can go 1 less than that, 2n, and I can throw the factorial down wherever I want, okay? Hypothetically, I could keep on going and go 2n minus 1, 2n minus 2, throw the factorial at the edge wherever you want. So I have a 2 to the n plus 1. Before I tell you how to do that, I have a question for you. What is x squared times x cubed equal to? Well, x squared times x cubed is x to the fifth. And, well, how'd you do that? What you did is you added the exponents. And the point that I want to make with this is if you add the exponents on top, I can split this into x squared times x cubed. So if you come over to here and see something like 2 to the n plus 1, I can make this 2 to the n times 2 to the 1, which is just 2. Finally, let's talk about polynomials. If you see something like n plus 1 squared within a ratio test, the way I want you to simplify it, don't. Please, please, please leave them alone. As for the polynomials, don't mess with them, okay? They'll be taken into account when you actually apply the ratio test, okay? I've seen way too many people say, oh, I know, this is n plus 1 times n squared. It's not. Okay, so how do we apply the ratio test? The way that you apply a ratio test is you're going to take the limit. The limit as n goes to infinity of your a n plus 1 times your a n flipped. And I absolutely split these up. The reason I split these up is because your a n plus 1, this is the side that you will factor, just like we did here. But a question I get a lot is, well, how do I know when to stop? How do I know when to factor it to? You factor it so that you're able to cancel everything on this side. You're going to flip your a in, and you want things to cancel. That's how you will factor these. Now, if after doing all that factoring and canceling, and then after applying the limit, if your value comes to a number less than 1, it'll converge. If it comes out to be bigger than 1, it'll diverge. And if it equals 1, it'll fail. The test will fail, and you should have done something else. So, now that we have all of this prerequisite stuff done, let's go ahead and actually go through an example. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. So for number one, what I want to do is I want to see does this series converge or diverge? I see I have factorials, exponentials, big giveaway that I'm going to be using the ratio test. So the first thing that I like to do is I like to find my a n plus 1 off to the side. So a n plus 1 is what you get when you replace every n with an n plus 1. So this will be 3 to the n plus 1 times n plus 1 squared divided by n plus 1 factorial. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and apply ratio tests. Now, our ratio test said it's going to take the limit as n goes to infinity, what is n goes to infinity, of my a n plus 1. So let's go ahead and factor this. This 3 to the n plus 1, that's an exponential. I can split it up into 3 to the n times 3. 
This n plus 1 squared is a polynomial. Leave it alone. n plus 1 squared. And then the factorial, if you have n plus 1 factorial, I can make that n plus 1 times n factorial. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this then. That was your a n plus 1, now it's multiplied by your a n, flip by your original problem. And so this is going to be n factorial divided by 3 to the n times n squared. At this point, let's see what cancels. Notice how the n factorials are going to cancel. Look how these 3 to the n's are going to cancel. And heck, take a look. This n plus 1 will cancel with one of the n plus 1's there on top. And so what I'm going to be left with is the limit. The limit as n goes to infinity. On top, I'm left with the absolute value of 3 times n plus 1 divided by, and then I have an n squared. And when I take this limit to infinity, this is bottom heavy, the highest power on bottom is bigger than on top, and those always go to zero. And zero, last I checked, is less than one. And because it is less than one, therefore the series will converge, converge by the ratio test.